Alicia Angel here. Today I will be doing a review, or at least a listing, for 221B Baker Street Live Journal Community on your guys' uh, top five, or at least the five of ones that everyone has listed as uh, being great. Holmes and Watson. You told me not to tell you. Don't get clever in Latin. So I'm going to do mine first. Um, and mine is Jeremy Brett, Dave... Vid Burke and Edward Hardwick, with Burke and Hardwick being the two Watsons. I said that I said before at one point that I believe that there that they were separate Watsons, but in all reality, that's not really true. That's not true, at least for me. Um, the two of them are very very good. If you look at any of uh, Hardwick's stuff beforehand, he has the same color hair that Burke did before he he came onto the show. And while the two of them do come across slightly differently when it comes to dealing with Holmes, it's a little understandable because Burke comes in and the way he is doing it is he is doing it for all the stuff before the final problem. He also gets one of the harder emotional ones in the final problem and in a few other ones. Um, Hardwick afterwards is a little bit more forceful. Not always is so much. He tends to follow Holmes around, but what can you do sometimes? And um, he does get a few more of the action scenes, like my favorite tackle, and a few other ones. But uh, besides that, I mean, the two of them are very, very good. They do come across it as slightly different. Burke is able to get a little bit more of unsure as to how exactly to talk with Holmes about this. Most of the time, I think that the way that they set it up, they had most of the stuff being the before and the afters. Well. Burke is, it, well, Hardwick isn't entirely sure how to talk with him after he's already ta told him all this stuff. Um, Burke, on the other hand, he comes right off and is very, very good at giving him glares and annoying looks and stuff like that, but he's also a very emotional um, Watson, and he shows the good emotional side to it. Um, both of them and do very well against uh, Jeremy Brett's it's Sherlock Holmes, especially he, when he's showing off his darker moods or his uh, more capricious, I guess you could say, a moods and stuff like that. Capricious or mercurial? Uh, I'm not sure. Either way, when he's jumping all over the place, both of them are, are able to, in some senses, calm him down and such and bring in a good amount and of humor and, and interesting, you know, acting towards it. I happen to like these. T I happen to like the groupings a good deal. I like I like Hardwick a little bit more than I liked Burke, but that's probably only because I haven't been able to find anything else by Burke. And I spent most of my time when I was a child thinking they were the same actor, and I thought pretty much that they were Hardwick. So that's beside the point, really. All right, on to the next one. The next one that only got a uh, small note on anything anyway was Peter Cushing and Andre A. Morel in the 1959 Baskerville version. I did mention this before on my five Hounds of the Baskervilles that sucked, um, or at least the top five Hound of the Baskervilles, and it was the one that wasn't all that great as far as story-wise. They messed with it a lot. But the thing that made it a lot... Um, a lot more interesting, I suppose you could say, he, or at least helped save it, was the fact that the Holmes and Watson relationship was intact. It was very, very much intact. You have a part in the movie where Holmes quite possibly disappears down a mine shaft. He comes up, and the only thing he has really is possibly a bruised bone or, you know, a hurt leg or something like that. And Watson, during this whole entire time, is very, very worried about him. You see him later. He pretty much getting ready to yell at Holmes for being such bitch, a um, callous person with his his body, even though Holmes, you know, mutters about things and says, no, I need to do that and everything else like that. But this particular Watson is one of the first ones that actually shows off exactly how useful Watson can be and how competent he is. And for that, I ha really have to thank him for it. And the fact that Pierre Cushing and Andre Morel were very, very good together and did a very good, you know, beginning of Holmes and Watson where it wasn't just Watson following him around, it was Watson also questioning him and showing off exactly what he could do. That is 
pretty much how it is. Peter Cushing doesn't show off a lot as Holmes in here, and so you only have him to really go up against people who have had longer or ten years as Holmes, but, I mean, he's a good Holmes, too. He is patient enough with all of the people that, like, Holmes is, and in general, he's a very good one, even though he is uh, light-haired, and some people are kind of like, eh, he was dark-haired, but hey, he was good, though. Okay, I'm going to do the uh, Russian version and the 54 version together. I have seen all of the Russian version. I haven't seen all of the 54 version. I've only seen a little bit of it, so if I get anything wrong, please don't hesitate to tell me, and I'll try and make it right. Um, the 54 version was quite interesting, and what I have seen of it, which was very little, because I kind of had to do homework, I'm getting close to finals, and shouldn't be doing this, but... Uh, <laughs> But the 54 version seemed like a very interesting uh, one. It also seemed very much like Doctor Who, um, which is understandable. I mean, I could totally see it at one point or another, even in some of the newer versions. One of the doctors coming down and saying, Hey, do you want to help me with something? And Holmes pretty much saying, Yeah, sure. And those two running off and having some grand-esque adventure. But that's beside the point, because I already wrote a fan fiction for that. Um... But the 54 version was very interesting in the sense that one of the first scenes that you have is with Watson storming into Scotland Yard and demanding that Lestrade print her attraction or something like that and include Holmes in this. Um, that was kind of interesting in the sense that beforehand, I guess you could say, the only people that you've really had are people like Nigel Bruce, who's just kind of poof. Hmm. Well, I never, and that type of thing. Whereas this one was, I mean, you were waiting for someone to get hit with this. He was very, very forceful and um, also seemed very, very competent, as they mentioned. Yeah, oh, well, you're a doctor. You should be able to help us. Oh, yeah, I can. Don't worry. And so, because of that, I think the 54 version does have something good. And plus, considering the fact that he considers about Holmes and Holmes seems very much, like I said, like an absent-minded professor of some sort who knows how to deduce and stuff like that. I can see where this would come um, through, where Watson would be very, very, you know, up on making sure that Holmes does get his recognition and does find what he needs and everything else like that, whereas Holmes just wants to, you know, solve crimes and everything. But at the same time, the, just that few scenes showed off exactly how much Watson really does care for Holmes, and that's really important, especially in, in uh, the Holmes and Watson relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Russian version is a little bit, like, switched when it comes to that, because, sadly, Watson seems to be the one who continually gets hit, especially in the first various two episodes with the beginning and the uh, study in Scarlet. At the same time, um, Holmes does what he can in order to try and make sure that Watson is comfortable, especially early on with the lodgings and stuff like that. Uh, later on in the Master Blackmailer that we had, uh, or that the Russian version showed, it shows that, Wat that when Watson does get upset, or at least when, still when Watson gets upset, because it's obvious that they've been together for a little while, okay, they've been roommates for a little while, it becomes obvious that when Watson does get upset about something that Holmes has to do or that's something that Holmes has done, Holmes is upset as well because he doesn't see what's wrong with it. And when Watson gets upset, it's, I guess you could say it's like a, a bearing so that he understands exactly how bad things can get and such. Um, and he also under, understands that, you know, Watson is someone that he is trying to care for. He's trying to make sure that not only that he stays, but also that he take, takes care of him and helps him out and stuff like that. I honestly think that it's quite sweet that the Russian Holmes and the Russian Watson have such a relationship to where Holmes will kind of trip over himself, and when he does realize that, he, do, he does what he can to make it up to Watson and to ensure that he is comfortable with these things. It's, I mean, it's a very good relationship. It's a very friendly relationship, and I enjoyed it and I enjoyed watching it. I especially enjoyed his reaction to realizing Watson was going to have to move out of Baker Street and leave him alone. I didn't like the beard so much, but no one does, really. Um, and that's really it. That's for 
the Russian and the 54 version. Both of them are quite good at showing off Watson as a capable person, and I liked the actor who played Watson in the uh, Russian version. He was quite cute.